Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Neely Crows gives stark warning over Spanish telco regulator merger. EU citizens could soon have to pay for British ID cards. Costly outlook for NHS as Polish maternity patients are sent home to give birth. Lobbyist study on storage heaters is deluded at best. What are these people on? Also, EU, Colombia, Peru, free trade agreement now enacted. We have the legislative report. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First, from our homepage, our eminent tech-savvy pensioner, Neely Crows, the EU commissioner who oversees digital technology, said she could take legal action against Spain unless it modified its plans for their regulator. This article looks at moves by the Spanish government to cut costs by merging sector and industry regulators. Spain's deficit figures breach agreements made under the Maastricht Treaty, and thus Spain is implementing austerity. No doubt the money saved will be absorbed by the fines for regulatory breaches if Crows goes ahead with legal proceedings. Now here's an interesting article that's running on our front page right now. Apparently the Home Office is introducing a £55 ID card fee later this year. The ID card scheme will be mandatory for Romanians, Bulgarians and other European nationals. Hang on a minute. We're all European nationals. And Mr Harper states that anybody coming to the UK from the EU for more than three months would have to obtain one of these European residence cards. This is a worrying move by the government, the concern being that the legislation could easily be applied to enforce ID cards. Perhaps such cards will carry a chip or barcode, and no doubt our Euro Bureau totalitarian kleptocrats will enforce some sort of no one will be able to buy or sell without one. Now this is an astonishing article. Apparently British taxpayers are spending almost £1 million a year for pregnant Polish women to go home and give birth. The problem here is that the NHS is conducting itself like a European Union regional body, leaving the public outraged because the majority of British people still believe that the UK is an independent and sovereign nation. The reality is that, politically, the EU holds the greater majority of the power. The disparity comes about because of the lack of complete financial and economic integration i.e. fiscal integration, which is something that the Union is pressuring for with great haste. Personally, the big problem I see with this is that never once have the people been asked if they are comfortable with handing over governance and sovereignty to the EU. Right, you might want to either take a seat or change the channel because it's time for Ranto Rick. I've been waiting for a while now for our research team to turn up something that exposes the lobbyists in action as they try to bear influence on our bureaucratic boffins in Brussels. Well, this article is a classic. Apparently, British Utility and Glen Dimplex, manufacturers of ceramic storage heaters, have come up with an incredible piece of prestiganda with just a hint of environmental spin. So the tagline is that their storage heaters could provide an additional 54 gigawatts of additional energy storage capacity across the EU and cut emissions. Who writes this stuff? They clearly have no understanding of physics or thermodynamics or the general rule of entropy. Beyond that, let's think about that energy storage for a moment. It says in the article the energy will be stored as heat. Well, that makes it an end point, not a store. The energy cannot be retained indefinitely. In fact, the heat is being dissipated all the time, even though with insulation the process can be slowed considerably. But this is like saying we're going to deal with water storage by giving everyone extra buckets, with each bucket having a few tiny holes in it. The sad thing is, is that some suited genius will present this to a plenary and smooth the 27 that make up the Order of Mordor. Then, the nodding dogs in the hemicircle will vote it through on the executive orders of Herr Schultz, no doubt. Now, I had a great time before Christmas poking fun at Baroness Ashton's delegatory visits to South America. 
Of course, ultimately, the peyote has paid off because a free trade agreement has been reached and we have the full report etched in the usual European elvish legalese. The question that seems to elude our British political pontiffs is, if Peru, Colombia and the USA can all have free trade agreements, then why can't the UK have one? Today in our video library, remaining on the topic of global warming and environment, I came across this video on Suspicious Observer's YouTube channel. The video looks at heliosphere science and the weather patterns of the solar system. The critical bit of observed evidence that got me thinking was that planetary warming is not restricted to Earth. It is happening throughout the planets of the solar system, even as far out as Uranus and Neptune. This is an excellent piece of film that I highly recommend taking a look at. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word program is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.